I, I think this is a really exciting time for um, patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. I think we've seen over the last 30 years or so just relatively incremental advances with our chemotherapy and we've looked at all sorts of different approaches to intensifying our chemotherapy and, and really haven't seen any significant improvements except for the addition of rituximab uh, which gives a 16% overall survival benefit at um, 10 years after completion of treatment. So we've made some small progress, but, but not massive progress. I think what we do know is that we are beginning to unravel the biology of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. We can understand what the dysregulated pathways are, what the oncogenic mechanisms are that drive um, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, and we're able to divide patients into subsets uh, based upon the molecular um, aberrations that there are in their individual um, lymphomas. So what I talked about was really some of the new drugs that are available that may have uh, specificity in certain types of diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. And broadly we can divide diffuse large B-cell lymphoma up into a group of patients who have a what we call an ABC type diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, where they have the um, molecular characteristics of um, B-cells that are activated in the, in the bloodstream. And there are also this other group of what we call germinal centre-like B-cell lymphomas, which look like uh, B-cells that are, are, in, are in lymph nodes. And those two different groups, this ABC group and this GCB group, harbour different prognosis and those patients with ABC type diffuse large B-cell lymphoma do tend to do less well than patients with um, uh, GCB type diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Now there are a number of new drugs that target specific aberrations that we know go wrong in the ABC type and, and much of the focus of my talk was looking at these new agents and how we can use these new agents to, to bring up the prognosis of patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma who are of the ABC phenotype to those that have the GCB type. So we talked about drugs such as lenalidomide, we talked about drugs such as um, ibrutinib uh, and some of the other newer pathway in inhibitors. We also talked about um, a drug called bortezomib which we use commonly in multiple myeloma. So there are ways of modifying these dysregulated pathways. Um, there are also different new antibodies that target some of the uh, proteins expressed on the surface of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma that are very interesting and may potentially add or, or perhaps even supersede um, the convention, conventional anti-CD20, which is rituximab. So we talked about mechanisms of action of monoclonal antibodies in lymphoma. Uh, we talked about these new generation of anti-CD20 monoclonal antibodies and about some of the studies that are ongoing at the moment. But we also talked about other pathways, other um, expressed proteins that may be, may be um, targets for various monoclonal antibodies. So, and we also looked at um, antibody drug conjugates. So this is um, a monoclonal antibody with a specific targeting to malignant B cells that carry a um, payload of chemotherapy. And we've used these very successfully in the treatment of Hodgkin's disease. And there are a number of these drugs uh, that are in clinical development at the moment. So they may be able to spare some of the um, adverse toxicity of chemotherapy. So I think there's a lot of exciting things going on at the time in, in, in DLB cells. So there's a lot of ground to cover in the talk. So I think people you know, really appreciated the overview that was able to give because there are so many new agent, agents and so, so much data out there. I think people appreciated some brief snapshot of what we were able to, to, to review, really. So, you know, there's a lot of clinical trials going on at the moment. So in the UK, we've been running the Remodel B study, which is looking at bortezomib, which may have a preferential activity potentially for ABC-type diffuse large B-cell lymphoma in combination with RCHOP chemotherapy. And we've recruited now 1,100 patients who have had real-time molecular analysis to be able to stratify patients into these different groups and they've been randomized to have conventional RCHOP chemotherapy or RCHOP with the addition of 
bortezomib. And so that study is almost recruited and I think will have uh, you know, important um, outcomes for us to see when, when the final analysis comes through. There are a number of other studies looking at new agents in combination with RCHOP um, such as ibrutinib and lenalidomide. So these are not quite prime time yet, but I would say that in the not too distant future, our patients with DLBCL, we will understand the molecular aberrations in the individual patient and not only give them conventional RCHOP chemotherapy, but give them a molecularly targeted agent. So I think it's, it's not quite there yet, but I don't think it's too far away. Well, I, I hope they, they have gone away with an understanding of what these new agents are, the different pathways that they may affect, and the different cell surface markers, for example, that they may, they may affect. So I hope that they've gone away with a feeling of understanding of the new molecules, that patient stratification is going to be important, and actually I don't think that we're going to be using single-agent RCHOP for very much longer.